For a few mornings as we left for school, my mum asked me if I'd done my duas. My mum is absolutely obsessed with having a routine that we stick to every morning, a bit like it's one of her science experiments. My parents do their duas whenever they think of something that they want to talk to Anna about. I sometimes wonder if other people see a Muslim's lips moving and think they're secretly casting a spell or just talking to themselves when actually they're just doing one of their duas. There are duas for everything, eating, sleeping, waking up, protection, knowledge, leaving the house, coming back into the house. Basically, anything you can think of. I used to forget them sometimes, but now I was making sure I did them as soon as I woke up, especially the prayer for protection. Because Daniel was getting Mina every day and I felt like I needed all the help I could get. He had started to follow Charlie and me around the playground at recess. Sometimes he wouldn't say anything, but he would do lots of staring and make grunting noises, as if he was having some really mean thoughts. And once, he charged at us like a rhino. Then he started laughing like mad because it made Charlie jump. Minus Daniel, school was getting to be quite all right, especially since Charlie and me were becoming super best friends. We laughed at all the same things, and we even wished for all the same things like getting an Xbox and more screen time to go with it. That was starting to make up for how much I miss my friends back at my old school. I was still a bit worried that they might be forgetting about me, but Dad said we could all get together in the summer. Mrs Hutchinson was really nice too. Every time she saw me in the mornings or when she walked past my desk, she checked in on me and gave me a wink. Not all the lessons were fun, obviously. But whenever we did something creative, she got really enthusiastic and her curls were happy and bouncy. It made me wonder if maybe she could imagine things the way I did, or if she was just like all the other adults. One afternoon, when we were doing an art lesson about Picasso, Mrs Hutchinson was so excited about how he made everything abstract that her curls started dancing with joy. She asked us to paint self-portraits just like his. Charlie and I were having loads of fun, giving ourselves colourful triangle noses and weird shaped eyes when Daniel walked past our desk and sent the dirty water cup tumbling onto my painting. Oops, clumsy me. There he was again with the upside down talking. It definitely wasn't an oops moment. It was a, hey, let's ruin Omar's painting on purpose moment. Charlie's mouth dropped open in surprise and my heart took a little dip as if it was falling into a different and less comfy place in my chest. It seemed like Charlie could tell exactly how I was feeling because he leaned in to whisper, he's just a big frog spawn. I bet you can't paint a new one even better. And he gave the biggest toothy grin I'd seen yet. I imagined what Picasso looked like. I wondered if he looked like some of his paintings, all out of shape, but happy. Happier than all the other paintings from those old days. And then I thought, hey, what if some kid had ruined Picasso's painting at school one day, which is why it came out all different and weird. And that's what made him famous. So I took my paintbrush, I grabbed it like it was alive and like it was the first time I had ever held a paintbrush and I painted. When Mrs Hutchinson saw my work, her curls almost rose to the ceiling. Omar, Omar, she said, you did this? Yes, Mrs Hutchinson. It's, wow, it's brilliant. Daniel's face was red, like the beets my dad will never eat. He passed me a note. It said, watch out. When mum came to pick me up, he stared at us both as if it were someone's old chewing gum that he had accidentally touched under his desk. I almost pointed him out to her, but then I remembered how relieved she'd been that I thought school was okay and I kept quiet. Sometimes, though, I think my mum magically knows when something, someone, somebody in her family needs cheering up, because that evening she announced she was making biryani. Biryani is my all-time favourite Pakistani food. It's hard to make, and Mum says scientists with full-time jobs don't have the time to make it every week, like I had asked her to. Mum always opens the French doors to the patio when she is cooking, no matter how cold it is outside, because she can't stand the house smelling like food. Homes are meant to smell like nothing, she said. Not fish, not samosas, not smelly socks, and not even weird artificial air fresheners. And since the door was open, I stood there with my giant bubble kit to see if I could really make a bubble bigger than me, like it said on the box. I could see our next door neighbour, the horrible Mrs Rogers. 
She was outside poking around at her weeds with her one wrinkly hand and holding her phone with the other. After a few minutes, we heard her say loudly, John, the Muslims are frying smelly onions again. Oh, I'm with her on this one, joked Dad, who hates the smell of frying onion and garlic gets into his clothes. I know, I know. We don't want to give her another reason not to like us, said Mum. Then she held Dad's arm, like she does when she is going to tell him a really good idea. Let's send her some. She'll love it. I know it gets really stinky when the biryani is cooking, but seriously, it's so yummy. It's worth it. I couldn't believe that Mum was being so nice after the way Mrs Rogers treated us when we took her those chocolates. Why does she deserve some of our delicious dinner? And to make it worse, Mum and Dad made Mariam and me take it over to her house. She took forever to open the door, as usual, and when she finally did, and we tried to give her the container, she just said, spicy food, no thank you, as she closed the door. Sheesh, said Mariam. You'd think we were trying to poison her.